Richard said, I'm the CEO of Reputation Leaders and I'm an SME. Uh, and I was responsible for the Edelman Trust Barometer for seven years before I started my own reputation consultancy. So I'll be looking at reputation and how do you implement difficult decisions and defend and even potentially enhance, as Lisa said, your reputation in the process. Uh, one of the key things is, as you all know, reputation is more important now than it has ever been. Even in normal times, reputations take decades to build and moments to lose. And this is particularly true of professional services like yours, where reputation, trusted advice is what you sell. And in many cases, it's the only thing you sell. Um, the good news is that in times of crisis, people look to expertise. That's what Lisa was saying. Show your expertise and, uh, and where people can trust you for, for sound advice. Bear in mind that we're living at a time where public emotions are running very, very high. People are very concerned about their health, their jobs, their anxiety. They're getting used to working from home, whole new environments. And in that environment, uh, agrarious examples of bad behavior, uh, such as gouging prices or treating employees badly or, or using it as a chance to cut costs by furloughing people when you're at a time of high profits, those will be remembered and those will be punished. So both great acts of kindness, but also bad acts will be remembered for a long time after this. This is the time to actually build your reputation, not to sell it. A um, couple of good examples. One brand who's, who's done very well in the public's view is Brewdog, the beer, um, whose founders have not only foregone their salaries this year to protect their workforce, but they've also adapted their production lines to produce sanitizer. Uh, the craft brewery opened its virtual bars to encourage people to continue to connect online. And so YouGov's data showed that BrewDog's reputation scores have increased by an impressive six points since the 16th of March. Um, on the other hand, there are brands whose public perception has been very negatively impacted by how they've handled the situation. You probably know Mike Ashley, chief executive for Sports Direct, had to issue an apology for refusing to close stores after the government ordered all non-essential shops to close. Uh, YouGov data showed that 88% of Brits don't consider selling sports equipment to be an essential service, and sports reputations, direct reputation fell. Uh, Weatherspoons also sparked public anger by refusing to close pubs and pay their workforce. That led to a 17-point decrease in their reputation scores. So how do you look after your reputation? Um, the framework we use is what I call the four Ps. You look after your product, your people, your purpose, and your profit. But in these times, the public is expecting firms to put people and purpose ahead of profit. That is considered the right thing to do. And importantly, how well you treat your employees is the second most important driver of corporate reputation behind your brand. It's well ahead of sustainability, philanthropy, and financial returns. So employees can be your biggest advocates and your biggest influences shaping your reputation. If you treat them right, if you provide sound guidance, if you do things fairly, uh, then they will share that with friends, family, social media, and, and beyond. But the flip side is true. Uh, there's evidence that if an employee feels negatively about their, your organization, they're going to talk badly about you twice as much as an employee who actually loves you. So those kinds of reputations can uh, spread very, very quickly and negatively. So are your employees feeling supported? Well, a recent Taluna report reported that only 20% of UK employees felt that their employer was highly supportive, nine or 10 out of 10. So Jeremy's points about frequent short communications and about creating small groups of support are really important. So what do employees want from their employer? Well, fortunately, last Friday, we ran um, in the US a nationally representative poll. And we asked that question of workers, what do they expect from their employers? And they told us they expected three things. The first was just give us practical help. The second was provide paid time off for non-essential workers. And the third was honest and frequent communications. So picking up on two of those things, the first defense of reputation is real action. Some of the things that uh, Jeremy and Lisa were talking about. And that has to be geared towards protecting employees' health and overall well-being. So this could either mean protective gear, or helping with work from home technology solutions or support for families with sick relatives or for homeschooling. So to, to bring this home in Italy, according to the Reputation Institute, those employers who provided face masks or tangible help 
found an, a five-point increase in their reputation scores and even just updating the evolving situation increased their image by another five points. The second thing is I'd say about communications is keep your cycle short and real. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm overwhelmed by long 400 word emails from people telling me all about their, uh, what they're doing for themselves. It's like, I don't need to know. I just need to know that you're, you're helping me and you're online. So um, bear in mind that all communications have to start with empath empathy, emphasizing concerns for workers. Even bad news needs to be honest and compassionate. So we talk about communicating the why, what, and how, and where of difficult decisions. The why is, why is this decision necessary? It's for survival. It's not just for cost cutting. Secondly, what does it mean for individuals? Start with the with them, what's in it for me? Start with safety first and then talk about the work impact. And there are some real questions. How long will I be furloughed? Will I be part-time, etc.? Importantly, Lisa mentioned this, how is it going to be implemented? How, the fairness of how people are treated will be remembered long after the process of it is finished. Consistency of message. So if people are furloughed and not able to work, how is that work going to be distributed amongst other people in the firm? Is that fair? And the where. Where can employees go for information and support? So in this environment, silence is not golden. Keep your communications short, keep them sweet, uh, and keep them honest. And just to finish off with something from the 2020 Edelman Trust Barometer, the coronavirus special, 79% of employees expect that there will be changes in operations. They are expecting that there'll be remote working, travel bans, events cancelled, and resets of budgets. But a similar percentage, 78%, expected employers to go and protect their workers and to do everything they could to protect their local community.